Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Leslie Marange, the founder and chief executive officer of Glytime Foods. If we enjoy this quality conversation, remember to subscribe, to like, and share. Leslie Marange, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. No, thank you, Trevor, and thank you for having me to this show. So you, you, the way we got to having you here is that we went out to, on Twitter and said, do you know somebody who's doing amazing stuff that uh, deserves to be in conversation? And your name came up top. So congratulations. You have clearly impressed some people out there. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Trevor. And you're only 33 years old. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's encouraging. I think my policy, the way I always do my things is let's get the work done and the world will recognize the good work that you do. So I'm mm. happy somebody recognized. And today I'm speaking with you and it's an honor. You've obviously done some good work. I mean, we're going to get to those uh, products. Um, but I want to find out, I mean, a 33-year-old young man having achieved all this, talk to me about how the idea of Glytime Foods crossed your mind. Do you remember when you first had the idea and you like you, you got excited? Do you yes. want to take us there? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Trevor, for for that question. I think uh, Glytime Foods has been a passion, a, a childhood dream, I would say. Um, I still remember uh, growing up in a family, my father was a prison officer, my mother was a teacher. And growing up, my father used to believe farming is the way to go. Every man should be a good farmer. And But my mother identified a talent in me, uh, the talent to cook very well. So as early as grade six, uh, I managed to, you know, cook yellow rice, just adding a bit of essence to it. <laughs> and, you know, the, because we lived in a camp, the community got to know that the guy mm. is a good cook. Mm. So when I was now moving uh, to my form one, um, my father insisted, you need to go and take up agriculture as a practical subject. And my mother sneaked in apron because she knew my passion. Mm. And even the name Glytime is my mother's name, Gladys, and my young sister's name combined wow. to come up with Glytime. Wow. Yeah, so I think my mom uh, recognized the passion that I had with cooking. And when I took it as a practical subject, I did it very well. And I was then advised by a lady uh, when I was around form three to say, no, there's actually food science at A level and food science at university. I was 15 then. So my career path was really, you know, uh, determined as early as 15. So at that age, I really excelled. I still remember being the first guy to get an A in 2005 in food and nutrition to the school that I attended. And, you know, because of the passion now, I was now driven to say if Nestle managed to do it, if Kellogg's managed to do it, why not come up with a state of the art plant from here in Africa, which can then challenge the status quo. So this dream, I then nurtured it through my education. I went, did food science, biology, chemistry, did a BSc in food science and technology. I then worked in um, a sugar manufacturing plant for about five years. But as soon as I graduated, uh, there is a colleague who actually uh, came to invite me to attend the, you know, to get into the corporate world because I was already doing, you know, your mandire, you know, your roasted corn. I was already in business and I was employing eight people by then. <laughs> <laughs> so he then said, come through, learn the corporate world. And when you learn the corporate world, you can then. So when I went into the corporate world, I was so determined. Mm. I was so focused. I'm here to learn. And as soon as I learn five years, I'll be out of the system. So in 2018, I then 
moved out of the system, started Glide Time. And the fear now, because my last job was, I was the product development manager. The fear now, they thought I was going to take all the formulations from them. But during my tenure with them, I realized, no, table sugar is actually going down. So preference, preferences are changing in the world. Mm. So I then researched on what is it that people are now. Mm. I, want, I want to take you, what, yes. what a fascinating story. Yeah. I want to take you to, you said you started cooking at six years old, eh? It was in grade six. And, so. and this is where, in Pumula, am I right? No, in Kami. In Kami, yes. Kami prison. Kami prison, Kami yes. prison in Bulawayo. Yes, yes. And uh, how, do you, how do you deal with uh, the stereotypes that says a man should not be cooking? We, we, did you face any of that stuff? Yeah, well, I think uh, initially it was an issue. You know, all the you know the young ladies, young girls would laugh, and I, I actually earned the name eh, because of that. But, what name was that? Uh, Luju, <laughs> <laughs> which means honey. Honey, yes, yeah? Yeah? yes, yes. So I think you know people are saying his cooking is so smooth, so it's good to be called Luju. So <laughs> yeah, the stereotype came. Does that name still hold? Ah, uh, well, I never share it with my colleagues. <laughs> well, after but, today, it's going to stick, eh? <laughs> But the, the people who I grew up with, you yeah, know, always yeah. refer to it. Ah, do you remember? You yeah. allude to it. You know, we yeah. laugh about it sometimes. So, yeah, I think the stereotype was there. Mm. But I think we, I, I, I did it so well. Not just cooking, even, you know, I was so thorough mm. with my household chores, you mm. know. At some point... A lady came and she saw because we used to have those verandas, you know, and it was shining. And she asked, Where did you get a very competent uh, housemaid like this? I said, No, I don't have a housemaid. My son is the one who. <laughs> <laughs> she then, talk, talk, yes. talk to me about, <laughs> talk to me about, um, you. so you leave university at yes. the university. You went and worked for uh, which company did you work for? Star Africa. Star Africa. Yes, yeah, Star Africa. What did what were you doing at Star Africa? Just talk to us about your coming in and your rise yes, in Star Africa. Yes. So Star Africa, I think I assumed um, four responsibilities in about five six years. Mm. I went in as a laboratory supervisor, and then I was given a task by my general manager, very tough guy, but I like him because he really trained me. Who is me. that? Do you remember uh, him? Yes, Marvelous Panda. Okay. He is now the supply chain director for PPC. Mm, okay. Yeah, so uh, he gave me, a, there was a problem in the laboratory, and the problem was effluent discharge. So, you know, if effluent goes uh, uh, above 80 ppm, you are then charged the extra PPM that comes after the 80. Mm. So I knew because I, I did my attachment there that this is a historical problem. And I think it then helped me to understand the importance of people in industry or in business. Um, all the other guys did not crack the problem. And, but they had very nice diagrams. They used to understand how the system works and everything. So I changed my approach. I said, you know what? There are people who have been working in this factory since 1976. Let me go and check with them where the problem is. Mm. So I was told because previously the, we used to have like toilets mm. uh, in the White House for the convenience of the pan boilers, you know. Uh, so the piping now used to then go and, you know, uh, through the recovery house. So an old man told me, you know, I like your people skills. There is a drain that was not closed when those toilets were removed in cognizance of food safety. So I then went and did my experiment, put caustic soda, checked the results of caustic soda. I went to the gym. I have got the solution. He, he said to me, if you don't make sure that the solution comes, you are out of this system. I dragged him. We came. He said, where is the issue? I said, no. Sugar is coming from that end, is connecting through this drain. And then he just looked at me and said, you know what, look for cement, close the drain. One week after, he promoted me to be a process manager. <laughs> so when I was a process manager now, this is when I learned how to be a man. Because we used to spend 72 hours to resolve a problem. And the rule was, you have to resolve the problem. You don't have to leave a problem. And I was taught in that system to say, you don't report a problem, you report how you have resolved the problem. So at any given time as a process manager, you are the general manager of the plant, you're responsible for production, 
quality, engineering, stores, and the welfare of people. And I was 25 by then. So this then cemented my position in the industry to say, you know what, I need to. And at one point, my CEO, I still remember, uh, Regis Mchikiri, he actually came from the whole area head office to say, I need to come and see who this young Leslie is. And then my GM introduced me to Regis and he said, Leslie, I've heard the good work that you are doing and well done for that. So I really created a spine. I became a guy with a spine at a very tender age to say, you know what, no matter, regardless the circumstances, we need to get a solution. And mm. this is, has really helped me to where I am now. Regardless of inflation, regardless of, you know, whatever the volatility, my spine is strong. I'm a fighter. I'll manage. <laughs> where do you think that comes from, that, that resilience? that strong spine, where, where does that come from? Is it from your upbringing? Is it, is it whilst you're working for Star Africa? No, I, I can relate this from a very tender age. Uh, you know, uh, when we grew up in a camp, uh, we used to then get involved in these fights. Kami prison. In Kami prison, yes. Mm. You know, we used to uh, play this, shock, this soccer, which we call Chikweshe. So I was that kind of a guy who then would rise up you know, for uh, in terms of, I, I did not want to see people fighting and I did not want bullies to take advantage of the young guys. So every time I got involved in a fight, it was not because I've started a fight, but it was because I always wanted to rise up to the occasion to say no bullying. To stop to, the fight. To stop the fight mm. and no bullying of the young guys. Mm. So I think that aspect of fighting for justice has been part of me. That aspect for fighting for underdogs, that aspect of fighting for you know equality mm. has been part of my 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 dna and mm. it has been something i still remember one of the fight a, a guy who was you know two grades ahead um he took our chikwesha ball you know our soccer ball and he teared it up and then the young guys were now crying and somebody has to ride to the occasion and then i, I confronted him uh, we did not get into a, a bloody fight, fight yeah. but we pushed each other. But I put him further, <laughs> so I won the fight. <laughs> so yeah, I think my background really play, played a, a very significant mm. role. To so say, you, you yeah. get so you get into uh, maybe before there. Let, yes. Let's let's stay with your background. Yes, yes. So your father, what is your father at prison at, at Kami Prison, and what is your mother doing? Uh, my mother is still a teacher. Uh, my father, my biological father is late. Um, now, I now have my uncles who are mm. now. Yeah, my father passed away when I was in form two. Mm. Uh, so it also created a sense of responsibility, you know, how you then spend your tuck from boarding school, your pocket money. I used to keep some and buy some tomatoes to bring home. I, I had to rise up to the occasion, mm. you know, to say you, you are now the father mm. in the family and you, you have to make sure that, you know, uh, the family is all taken care of. So I think the sense of responsibility came. And just after my father's death, I was a prefect. And that's the only time I, Form 1 was the only time I was not a leader. And mm. from there, mm. you know, across, because I had to be disciplined to make things work. Mm. I had to be that kind of a guy so that I become likable. And because you are likable, a lot of things come your way. So it's, uh, it's an art that I learned from mm. a very tender age. But you can be likable by being naughty. <laughs> um, <laughs> by being bully. Yes, you can yes, also yes. be likable by, by, by being nice yes, and standing yes, up to things. But yes. you chose... you. Clearly, your wiring is yes, yes. to be nice by yeah. standing up for those people for those. that are being bullied. I think it was also aided by the environment that I grew up in. You know, the environment was such in a way that you would see offenders being incarcerated and you never wanted to land in that space. Nice. You know, my house and medium prison was just like 60, 70 meters away. So you could clearly relate with whatever is happening in that space. So, so the prison environment uh, where your dad was working yes, yes. did something to shape you? Very, very much. It mm -hmm. did something very much. Uh, I think we, I learned how to conduct myself because I knew the end results. It was right in my face to say, you know what? And you know, our mothers growing up, if you steal sugar or anything, they will tell you, you know what? If this thing grows with you, you end up in prison. If these things uh, uh, grow up with you, it, you end up in. So we knew the results mm. of being naughty. Mm. So hence the choice of being, you know, 
uh, 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 disciplined. Mm. Yes. Talk, talk to me about your education. So you start off at Kami Primary? Yes, yeah, Kami that, Primary. And yes. what, where else did you go? And then I went to Mnene Secondary School, and then I went to St. Columbus briefly, and then I went to JZ. So Mnene Vice... JZ Moyo. Yeah, JZ Moyo. Yeah. And then JZ Head Boy 2007, and then I went to college. And you're clear you want to do food science? Yes. I actually, when I was 15, I actually, you know, Sunday Mail used to advertise these vacancies. So I actually cut a piece of the Sunday mail and then placed it in my folder file. So Chinoy was a preference because I knew Chinoy when I was Chinoy 15. University. Yes, and when these other opportunities came to say use it, heat and, and the like, my mind was so narrow to Chinoy because of that sentimental value. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Talk to me about less, the lessons that you learned at um, uh, Star Africa. Yeah. You, 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 you have this um, great lesson that you learned which is do not come with problems, yes, come yes. with solutions. solutions yes. work, until, work until you find the solutions. The solutions Talk to yeah. me about the other lessons that you learned from working at Star Africa. Yeah, no, I think with my experience with Star Africa, it, it was really brilliant. Uh, I think when I came out of that system, I told myself, now I can do anything in this world. I'm ready, you know, because you are being given a responsibility of more than 125 people at 25 years old. Wow. Different departments. And I'm just a food technologist. This job is for process engineers. And I'm getting in there to find solution. And my boss, uh, Marvelous Wanda, and that was the culture, you know, to say no problems in a production meeting, operations meeting. We don't want to hear the problems that you faced. We want to hear how you have overcome the problem. Even if it is a ZESA issue, you need to have a solution. Have you engaged them enough? What is it that they've told you? How have you planned for the next, you know, uh, 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 power cut? How have you planned for water outrage? So at the end of the day, it really wired me to be a, 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 a result-oriented person, to be a, a, a goal-oriented mm. person. You know, at one point, uh, because I knew my boss was a result-oriented guy. I actually then said, you know, we're having problems with uh, sugar specs and we're packing sugar for Delta. And we knew Delta is very strict with there. So I knew my boss is going to give me a hard time to say, why did you pack this sugar? So I went to buy a giga screen, I replaced it. But the good part, the giga screen normally used to take 36 hours. I did it in six hours. What is a giga screen? No, it's a screen that uh, separates bad sugar and good sugar. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I did it in six hours. I assembled all my engineering guys, the process guys, and we did it. So the time that he heard that the plant had stopped, because he was the only guy who was supposed to stop the plant. Mm. The time that he heard the plant was stopped, I had finished repairing it. So there was this amazement of, yes, he has broke the rope, but he has managed to resolve the problem within a record time, you so, know. So tell, <laughs> tell me, in yes. your current operation, we're yes, going to talk yes. about your products and your operation. Yes. Do you find that that approach of yeah. don't bring problems, bring solutions, yes. it, does it apply? It, it is actually the does cornerstone. Does it work? It's, it's the cornerstone of, cornerstone of it, what you do. Yeah, it's the, actually the cornerstone of what we do because, you know, Customer preferences are dynamic. They are changing every time. So we interpret them through a product. And when there's something that is amiss, we listen to what the customer is requesting us to do and we correct it. And then that's how we have managed to grow our range and our business. And also, I mean, Zimbabwe, uh, no doubt, Trevor, is a very volatile, it's a VUCA environment. It's a volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous, right? And now that turbulence and the training that I got it helps me to be resilient. And I think that's the reason why we have managed to survive in this economy. Because at one point, I think uh, inflation really hit us hard that I was left with about $800. And that 800 was enough to pay my rentals and probably a bit of my salaries to my guys. And I did it. And the next thing is, I asked my team, what is it that we need to do now? Now inflation is completely eroded us, you know. And I think we then found a way through order financing and then, you know, we're back on our feet. So I've seen the most of this environment, but because of my training at Star Africa mm. to say, you know what, you need to stand. And one other thing, Star Africa taught me to love people mm. because I'm coming in a system where I'm not a process engineer, I'm a food scientist. And historically, since 1956, you know, food scientists never worked as plant managers. And I'm coming in an environment which is competent, uh, competent, which requires me to. And the only thing that I had to do 
is to work with people. Mm. So now my business is now a people-oriented business because of that. And these old Mandela's, if you show them that respect, they will actually support you. So I became like the best in my time, not because I was the most qualified, but because I had the best people skills. People would confide wow. in me, tell me trade secrets, how to maneuver, how to resolve problem. And one thing that they also wanted you in re from you in return is the ownership. You know, to say when there is a problem, as a manager, you need to take ownership to say, I'm the one who messed up and protect them. So I was that kind of a guy. To say when they tell me, you know, the plant is stopped and the way we can stop, we can unjam the plant, let's put some of the sugar on the floor. And it's a dismissible offense. And But I need to justify with my directors why I've done that, because we need to run the plant. And, you know, I then used to take those hits and, you know, and became the advocate, wow. but at the end of the day, in the interest of running the plant, and we ran it successfully. And I mean, our daily target was 450 tons. Now I'm running a plant, it's up 30, 40 tons in a day. So I have that extra capacity to say, even if I grow this thing, uh, you know, uh, 10, 20 times, I can still manage it because I've got the competence. I was trained to do so. So I then capitalize on that to say, this is what I still have. I've lost everything, I've no raw materials, I've nothing, but I still have all that. Imagine getting free access to the Newsday, the Standard, the Zimbabwe Independent, and the Weekly Digest for a full month. Well, you can, and all you need to do is download the Newsday e-reader app on Google Play Store or scan the Newsday QR code in any of the AMH print publications and start enjoying the quality content. e-paper. <laughs> How many are you in your in your family? Yeah, so in our family we are three of us, mm -hmm. and uh, there's my brother, mm -hmm. and there's myself, and two what, what, are, what are their names? Uh, my brother is Mnyaradzi, mm -hmm. and uh, Leslie Takuzo is me, and mm. my young sister Timely. Mm. Yeah, so but pretty much we when we grew up, my brother grew up uh, with uh, my uncle, mm -hmm. uh, and I grew up with. Uh, my mom and mm. my young sister mm. most of the time mm. so he was uh, pretty much in rosapi harare and i was in blawayo mm. with my young sister Blawai. yes and you've got a very strong debele accent has anybody ever told you that <laughs> yeah you know yeah, growing up in blawayo mm. 18 years of my life you know I you can't take out that, yeah that from I can't. Yourself, from and you. I, I think it's it's a very good thing because it has really helped me manage the diversity around the country. Uh, you know, being in Blawayo, I can relate with people in Blawayo very well. Um, uh, being uh, from Manika land, I can relate with my people very well. It's a, t it's, it's a skill, yeah, you know, it's, it's a, a blessing to be yes. in, in that space. Yes. So, um, Leslie, you, let's move on now to, you now have the education. Yes. You've got the talent. Yeah. You've found the name, yeah. uh, Glytime, yeah. uh, Glytime Foods for your for your company. Yeah. How do you, how did you deal with the issue of funding this enterprise from where go? Talk to us through that. The challenges, the pain, the struggles. Um, was it smooth sailing? Was it a struggle? Yeah, I think I think th this is one of the most difficult part of doing business in Zimbabwe. I, I would say because you are on your own, uh, literally. Uh, you don't have a track record that any bank can, you know, substantiate your claims. Uh, you are also coming from a humble background where most of your relatives or most of you are having enough to fund for their own families. Uh, so I think my brother also played a part. Uh, he, he gave me money, but the money, he gave me 30,000 rand so that I can process my documentation for me to come to South Africa. And because I was so passionate about the business, I misused the money. <laughs> <laughs> How did you misuse the money? I did not go and, you know, uh, did the uh, sarquas and the thing. I then went and bought an industrial, a small industrial oven 
to say, no, let me follow my dream. And to him, it did not really sit very well uh, because he expected me to be in South Africa, you know, being in South Africa, a food technologist, 40, 60, So he wanted you runs. to come to South Africa yes, for a job? for a job, yes. But you decided to use the money to buy a machine? Yeah, to buy a machine, yeah, because I had also created a proof of concept and I was confident, you know, people are liking the product, you know, and health and wellness is a social value. It's going to be a trillion dollar industry. And I need to get into that space, you know. So uh, I, I, was, I was so conflicted, Trevor, I, I don't want to lie. And thanks to my wife, because by then I was now married. My wife was working for an NGO and she was now taking care of the family, the little baby buying pampas. And at least I was trying my luck with, you know, the corporate world. And I had a bit of saving from my previous job because these guys were also very good in terms of their remuneration. Mm. So I had a bit of saving from my previous how, how job. How did you leave your job? Did, did you decide, um, Star Africa, I'm, 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 I'm off. I have this vision. I'm going to, to go and do this. How did you do that? Yeah, so what, what happened, Trevor, I remember 2018 February, um, when I was now, because I moved from being a process manager now to be a product developer, I actually suggested, you know what, guys, table sugar, the sales are going down. We need to now come up with innovation uh, uh, solutions. Let's introduce sweeteners. Let's introduce honey. Let's create uh, a, a buffer from this loss that we are experiencing because now manufacturer's sugar was now on the rise, but table sugar because people now perceive the brown sugar is more healthier. Mm. So I, I then, they allowed me to start the product development department. And then when I introduced, I think I introduced about 12 products and the incremental revenue was the knock on my head to say, no, you are actually a genius. <laughs> <laughs> you are enriching Star yes, Africa. You yes. should be doing this for yourself. Uh, you, you, you can actually do more. You know, you can actually, you are creative. So my boss by then was uh, Douglas Mpindiwa, um, uh, former Nestle National Foods. I told Doug, Doug, now I need to leave. And Doug really taught me the commercial side of things because I'm coming with hard skills, the engineering, production, mm -hmm. uh, technical stuff. So Doug was the guy who then helped me you know, in terms of my branding, because this branding is like four years old. And Doug was the guy who then taught me how do you brand? How do you communicate mm. a product? How the commercial aspect so of you, things. So you live, you live Star Africa. Yes. Yeah, how, so it's what I, I want to find out, how do you do that? Yeah, so I, I confided with Doug. You know what, Doug, now it's time for me to leave. You know, I was here for a certain period of six time. Six years, you were yeah. there for six years? Yeah, six years. Now I need to go and set up. And then Doug said, no, Leslie, we've got a lot of projects that are pending. You need to finish all the projects. So I said, how much time do you need, Doug? He said, I gave him my resignation in February. He said, can you push me for the next three months? So I was there February, March, April. I tendered my resignation in April, and then I left. But he then said, if you face any other problem, come back. please come back. And evidently, last year, uh, my former CEO actually invited me and said, ah, I've got a job offer for you. But I said, no, nah, it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've got very sound relationship with the guys. So yeah. 30,000 from your brother, 30,000 yes. rand. Yes, yes. You decide to use it to buy a machine. Yes, How yes. else and where else did you get funding? Uh, well, after that, I, I think because uh, after the 30,000, that's when I then, because 30,000 is like 3,000 US. And then inflation hit it to about 800. And I still remember the experience. I slept on the floor. I felt very nauseated. And, you know, those words that Doug said on my exit, Leslie, you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> you now not wanted yeah, to go back, yeah, tempted to yeah, go tempted back. Yeah, tempted to go back. We're now ringing because now I, I, I don't still have anything. You know, inflation is the better share, you know. And so, but I then said, what is it that we have coming from a chemical background? Uh, there's one thing, one aspect that, you know, being a scientist, you always want to look into what you have within mm, you. Mm. So I think that aspect kicked in to say, Leslie, yes, you have lost everything, literally. And that 800 that was left, I paid my salary and my rental and it was gone. And it was on a Friday. So I gave my finance uh, guy an obligation, go and research, I'll also go and research. So I then, How many people were you employing at that particular moment? Uh, we were about six of us. Six of you. Yeah, yeah, for production, myself and my accounting guy. So I then said, what is it that we still have? 
And then I recognize that we still have orders. We actually, we actually had orders with 20,000. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I then capitalize on that to say, this is what I still have. I've lost everything. I've no raw materials. I've nothing. But I still have orders. So I called around, you know, a couple of people that I know who have been in business. And I was told about this thing called order finance. And they actually referred me to old mutual microfinance. And that's where I went and got the 20,000 to then reinvest in the business. And from there, because I had learned my lessons, I was now careful. And from 20,000, I think we grew um, yeah, that money to about 37,000. What, what do you think explains your success? No, I, I think one thing that is really big is the dream. Yeah, because I told myself, whatever is going to happen, I'm not going to give up. Mm. Remember, I was a fighter from long back, and I always fight, Trevor. I always fight for shelf space. I always fight for a, a better product. I always fight for category leadership. I always fight for, you know, for my guys, mm. for, for better salaries. I always fight. So I think that resilience in me is what then carried me through this turbulence mm. to say, you know what, I just need to fight. I'm getting in a space where I'm competing with multinationals. And the least thing that I can do is to be weak. I mm. need to be a fighter. So with me, fighting has been my thing. I always fight. And that, that strategic thinking, you know, I think after my food science, I went and did an MBA uh, at NAST. Mm -hmm. You know, it really helped me to get that commercial orientation. So my education really played a lot. And the power of relationships, uh, Trevor, I think... That's the other aspect. I, 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 everywhere you go, they will tell you Leslie is, is, a, is, a, is a down to earth guy. I always want to learn. When I get into spaces where I'm not sure about how to conduct myself, I never attended cheesy schools, I never went to Ivy Links, I never, but I know through people there is a lot that I can learn. So I confide in people, I look for help, I present myself in the most natural way. And that has really helped me. And I also listen to my clients. You know, they tell you what they want. And that has been, you know, the people aspect from South Africa, I also carry it. Mm. People are the most, even the best billionaire in this world. Is my, his money comes mm. from people. So the one thing that I, I noticed when we met is your humility. Yeah. You, like you said, very down to earth, humble yeah. person. Um, where, where do you think this comes from? Yeah, I, I think my, my mother played a very significant role in that aspect. Yeah, remember, uh, you are a teenager and you are shining the floors, you are doing laundry, you are doing gardening. And I think in me, it then uh, created a culture of focusing on the deliverables. I always talk to my guys to say, no fluff, let's do the work, let's get our hand dirty. Let's make sure we service our clients. Let's make our clients happy. Let's make our people, let's make our team happy. So at the end of the day, I think my mother really emphasized because of that Christian background to say, you know what? You need to be down to earth. So it's, yeah. it's your upbringing, you know? We, yes. we, it's something that we we come across quite a lot in, yeah. in this yeah. show. Yeah. That upbringing is very important. Yes, yes. Uh, which has instilled in you that humility, yeah. that humility that has made you Yes. as successful as you are, you, yes. as you've become. Shall we get into your products? Yeah, um, sure. uh, if you could just walk us through your okay. products and tell us what, what, what it is that you've brought. For, uh, this is manufactured by you. Yes, manufactured. Branded by you. Branded by How me. many people do you employ now? Currently in Zimbabwe, we are around 36, and then Zambia, 17. And then Botswana around three. We are now still building the Botswana team. So, so describe to us the what, what's the operation in Zimbabwe like? What what do you have? Yeah, in Zimbabwe we have got the manufacturing plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got the production, we've got the packing mm -hmm. and the distribution. Mm -hmm. So everywhere everything is happening in Zimbabwe, and we have got merchandisers across the country as far as Victoria Falls, Mtare, Chiredzi, Mashingo across the country right yeah so this merchandise is because our brand uh, is sold in the modern trend your tmp can pay your food lovers your bone machines your okay mats 
we have merchandisers who then make sure that the stock is well taken care of, displayed it properly, displayed properly mm -hmm. and then they make the orders. And in Zambia, we are also listed in TMP and Pay. And we you have, don't manufacture in Zambia. No, we don't manufacture You're in Zambia. You're doing distribution. Yes, the distribution. Okay. But we have got uh, an SBU, a Glide Time Zambia. So the narrative is I'm trying to uh, remember I want to grow a global brand. And uh, through that, I'm trying to set up micro multinationals mm -hmm. within these countries where Glide Time is resident in South Africa, mm -hmm. in Botswana, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Zambia, in mm -hmm. DRC. Mm -hmm. And then we incorporate the locals mm -hmm. from that particular country. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, as we are... So in Botswana, what's the operation? Again, yes. it's, it's just... Uh sales marketing yes sales marketing mm -hmm. yeah so now we have registered glide time zambia which is now fully operational we have got around 25 tmp can pay shops and then 23 alternative shops so we've got close to 50 shops in zambia mm -hmm. and then in uh, botswana we are just servicing the celebi pique mm -hmm. uh, area not very much about six seven shops in celebi pique mm -hmm. uh, south africa we just registered nothing yet is mm -hmm. happening and mm -hmm. then we have got this zimbabwean operation mm -hmm. so now um as as we also uh, we're fortunate to get a pe uh, structure now mm -hmm. we are going to be like 24 times what we are now wow so we'll be able what is to the PE then, structure uh private equity okay yes All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be like 24 times yeah. bigger than what we are now so we'll be able to then service all these, you know, micro uh, multinationals that mm. we are trying to create mm. Mm. and starting with the region and then mm. using the Africa Free Trade mm. uh, Continental. Shall, shall we talk about, uh, are you at liberty to, to share the private equity thing? Who's come in? Um, maybe you might not name names, but yes. talk, 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 talk to us about this what this private equity thing has done yeah. to the business. If you are able to share okay. who's coming, that'd be fantastic. Uh, well, um, the shareholders agreement don't allow me to share. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is yeah. it a local company? Yes, is it, it's, it's an local, international company. No, it's, it's, a, a, local it's company. a local company. Okay. I, I'll, I'll say it's um, it's a continental company. Okay, which is coming on board, and um, these guys are investing in us building instead of the art factory. Uh, um, wow! You know, uh, bringing this in, is a big break for you. Yes, yes, yes. Bringing in, uh, you're entering the big boy. Yes, the uh, big boy club. club now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So I think yeah, it is going to help us scale up, bring up mm. automated equipment and working capital, mm. and you know, we just want to, you know, go go all out. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So we have got high fiber, mm -hmm. a low sugar. Uh, low cholesterol and low salt, which mm. are the aiders of non communicable diseases. Mm. You brought us your, some of your products, yes, and yes. Um, I mean, this 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 could be anywhere in the world. Yeah. This could be um, a line of products from from America, from the UK, from from Singapore, whatever. Walk yeah. us through these products and what the thinking is behind right. the products. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Trevor. Um, with the products, I think what we have done is we have created a brand using locally available or regionally available raw materials. And the reason why we came up with Glide Time is because of the non-communicable diseases, right? To say they are now more prevalent in our economy, in our societies, mm. and health and wellness has become a social value. So we created our brand around non-GMO. Mm -hmm. We created our brand around uh, low... Non-GMO? Yes. What's the, what, what's, what are the benefits of non-GMO? Just walk us through that. Well, um, it's, it's a debated issue now. Uh, some people say GMO are okay. Some people say, but our society, they perceive GMO as bad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, perception has got its own life. And perception is reality. It's reality and it has to be managed. Yeah. So by the fact that our even our government does not allow GMOs to okay. come. Right. So which is something that we said, ah, okay, let's also consider that mm. in our formulation. Mm. So we have got high fiber, mm -hmm. a low sugar, a low cholesterol and mm -hmm. low salt, which mm -hmm. are the aiders of non-communicable diseases. Mm -hmm. Your sugar diabetes, your hypertension, 
uh, your cancer, you know, uh, your, you know, this non-communicable, your obesity. Mm -hmm. So I think our formulations are around those things, okay. you know. So this uh, is... Um, Yes, granola. Granola cereal. So mm. this is a high fiber cereal, the granola, uh, which is formulated mainly using oats because mm -hmm. oats are high in fiber. Mm -hmm. And but we then use 16 more other ingredients so that the test becomes good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that health doesn't become boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have got oats. Mm -hmm. I think these have really taken the market by storm. You know, there's low sugar cookies mm -hmm. where we have oat added, cookies. Oat okay. cookies, yeah. That one is macadamia from Chipinge. Oh, wow, and I this, love macadamia. Oh yeah, yeah. You have to try that, right? <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> right. And then we have got the pumpkin seed. Mm -hmm. uh, the pumpkin seed, you mm. know, is good for men's pumpkin health. Pumpkin seed takes yeah. me to the rural areas where yes. I grew up in Gwanda. Yeah, oh, good, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. yeah, and that's the narrative to say we want to then take those heritage-based innovation into something commercial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the pumpkin seed and the original. Mm -hmm. So we also have like- I'm gonna put this down okay. so that we create space. We create space, that's okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So we have got also the granola, which comes honey-flavored granola, mm -hmm. which is free from sugar. Uh, for people who are diabetic. Can I take this home? Yeah, yeah, sure, Trevor, sure. sure. You need to go and try them. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is honey, honey, uh, granola. enhanced granola. Yes, mm -hmm. honey enhanced granola, which is free of sugar, mm -hmm. you know, and it's good for people who are diabetic. Because my mother has been diabetic for 32 years, mm -hmm. yeah? so I was also trying to find a solution for her, you know. And then these are oats. Um, oats, Pretty much, this is a down packed product. Right. Yeah, this is. What, what's in there, uh, apart from raw oats, rolled oats, anything else? So, the difference now with uh, quick oats and rolled oats, our rolled oats has got more high fiber. It's like your roller meal, yeah. you know, yeah. and quick oats is like your refined. So, rolled oats are more preferred in terms of roughage. They then help you in terms of, you know, bowel movement, mm. reduction mm. of cholesterol, mm. protection of the heart. And then the most exciting... I like the, the branding. Who's, who's who, the packaging, rather? Who's doing the packaging for you? What we do, we have internalized the, the solution of our packaging. And some of the packaging, we have worked with local manufacturers yeah. to say, guys, this is what we want. And they've really come up to speed mm. with what we want. Because, you know, when we are trying to create... A global brand. Yeah, you can't mess up on the. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. So mm -hmm. this you is the, your, that's the, your favorite. Yeah, this is the exciting because this comes as an alternative for people who want to reduce on meat intake or yeah. who want to completely stop on meat intake. And this is like a, a vegetarian, a vegetarian uh, burger, vegetarian. Wow. We've got vegetarian sausages and the like. So these ones really help people who want to eliminate or reduce on meat intake, and. Uh, Fumba Mountain, mm -hmm. uh, I would know you'd ask, why why not Glytime? <laughs> yeah. You know, this really comes from Manika Land. And last year we sold about 74 tons. Yeah, it comes from Yonyanga, Bema Valley of Fumba. So I said, you know what, in cognizant of where I come from, let me also brand something. Yeah, Fumba Mountain. Fumba Mountain. And it's doing very well in the market. People like it. We actually export this to Cape Town. Yeah, it has got a decent market in Cape Town. People That's really good. like it. Yeah. Mm, then the last one? The last, you know, these are nuts. Okay. Um, everyone who has flight as Zim, you know, came across this. So you're supplying as Zim with as this? Zim with mm. that, yeah. And we are also supplying the main retail supermarkets. And with our products, uh, now because I've learned and created a people-oriented mm. uh, brand, and I now know the value of people, we are now running an SME, a Glytime SME program, mm -hmm. where people like young people, young women, because we've got a problem of unemployment, 95% of our people are not employed in our country. So now we have got, we started this a month ago, we've got a database of close to 200 young people who have signed up for the Glytime SME program. And how this works, you know, young people just come in, they sign in, you know, as little as $50, and we give them at concessional rates and they retail. What are we trying to do? We are trying to spread health and wellness at the, at the same time giving young people things to do. Mm. And then when they come for the second time, we then give them, if they uh, come with $50, we then match with a credit of $50 so that we can then scale them up. Mm. And I think it has really excited a lot of young people, even people in the diaspora now, We've created a platform if for them not to just send money, but to send money that can empower people back home. So they send the $50, we then give whosoever they are interested in to get empowered to sell the product. And it's doing very well. Now we've got a guy who's selling about a thousand autists wow. in a week. Yeah. 
and it's amazing. That's your distribution channel. It, that's our distribution channel. Yeah. And this is now my people orientation to mm. say I've been a people person mm. and this is now creating a solution mm. to try and bring more people out of poverty mm. and empower them while they wait for the next biggest opportunity mm. in their lives. Now that you've, you've, got, you've got big investors on board, yeah. what's the long-term plan? What is Glide Time going to look like in the next five to 10 years? Uh, Trevor, Glide Time is a global brand. <laughs> no doubt of that, uh, yeah. Glide Time is going to sit in every retail shop in this world. Wow. I want Glide Time to uh, be what Nestle managed to achieve to be what Kellogg's managed to achieve, to be you know, what Cork managed to achieve. And I can see it happening, Trevor, it's happening. You know, we are out of the country now, we are in the region, and the product is being accepted. Now export is contributing 12 to 15% of our revenue. So uh, Glide Time is going to be one of the biggest micro multinational in SME-led industrialization, which is going to help in terms of creating job opportunities, you know. I'm developing of... goosebumps as you're talking. I'm so excited. I mean, that's a 33-year-old yeah. um, with such an amazing vision. I yeah. mean, I wish you, I wish you the best. Yeah. What is it that needs to be done for you to get to that vision? I, I think now I understand that I've done what I could do. Now I need people. Mm. Yeah, it's, now I need talent. Yeah, now I need talent. Not just talent in terms of young people, but even the guys who have seen it mm. all. Mm. Because I mean, Zimbabwe, Trevor, through my Eagles Nest engagement, I've seen amazing talent in this country. Uh, you have walked the path, uh, you know, people in your generation, we have got amazing, brilliant people, uh, well-mannered uh, old, old guys, you know, people with, you know, business ethics, so now it's an issue of me learning as much as I can mm. from the people uh, who came before me and also attracting as much as I can from the people in my generation. Mm. So I think if that blend comes into action, mm. I can assure you Glide Time is not going to settle for anything less mm. but the best mm. of this What, what is it that you think as a person you yeah. lack? You are humble. Yeah, you are talented. Yeah, what do you lack as a person? What 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 are what are what are, what are um, uh, your your weaknesses? Yeah, well, I think I remember Trevor. I came from Kami, went to Mberengwa, went to uh, Gwanda, your rural area. Attended my high school, uh, Chinoy Nast. Um, I think my exposure really is not that much. Mm -hmm. I've not been too much exposed. I've mm -hmm. been exposed in the local manufacturing systems. I've been exposed in the, uh, you know. So I now, uh, if you look at my team, the way I'm now bringing uh, people around me, mm -hmm. I'm now looking for the guys from my village, people who studied in Europe, Asia, so that I can compensate on that weakness. Right. Yeah, because I always say to myself, I can be a good product developer, I can be a good process uh, person. I can be a, I have a good uh, uh, strategy, but I also need other people. Probably an individual can have five or seven mm. set of skills, mm. but for you to bring up a global brand, you need a thousand plus. So you mm. need more people around you to substantiate what you're trying to do. And um, your wife has been in, uh, uh, has played a big role in this. Talk to me about about the role that. Uh, uh, and her name is Talent. Hey? Yeah, Talent. Yeah, <laughs> she's also very talented. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about the role that she's played. Yeah. No, my, my wife is, is... is She's got a master's in public health. Yes, yes. And a bachelor of science in uh, food science. Food science, yeah. So she is the one who always... I think she's a gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. When we want to be too excited, she's that person who reminds us of, of our mandate. Mm. To say, Leslie, we are fighting in the space where we need to keep NCDs. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything to what, what jeopardize non-communicable diseases. Sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we right. can't jeopardize that. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, opportunities come when you want to get into this industry. But she always reminds you, mm. our alignment to the vision, mm. we don't have to drift mm. from what we need to achieve. Mm. The health and wellness is our business. Our business is to care, take care of people through mm. provision mm. of healthy foods. Mm. So at the end of the day, she helps me with the discipline, you know, of analyzing opportunities mm. and making sure that we stick to the lane. Mm. Yeah, so she has been instrumental. And I mean, she's a very 
She's very good with my family. She's mm. very How good. How many kids with, do you have? I've got two kids. Two kids. How yeah. old are they? The first one is four years, mm. Matida Ishe, mm. Kesley. Um, I wanted to sneak my name to her, but the mother <laughs> resisted. <laughs> <laughs> and then the younger one is my Bongwe, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Maita Ishe. Mm. They are very beautiful daughters, very smart. I think they also gave me that, you know, a reason for existence to say, continue pushing Absolutely. so that you give these guys the best of you know, their lives. So, um, Leslie, young people watching you yeah. in Zimbabwe, yes. particularly in Zimbabwe, yes, and I yes. suppose in the region, yeah. um, listening and being inspired by this success story yeah. that you've just related now. Yeah. yeah. And they're saying things are tough in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we, we 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 find it difficult to to make ends meet, let yeah. alone get go, go into business. Yeah. I'm, I'm inviting you now to address, to focus on that camera yeah. and share a message, um, um, authentic message about what is it that young people ought to be doing in, yeah. in this season. Yeah, uh, Trevor, it's, it's very true and it's heartbreaking that things are very tough and you can see with the exodus of young people out of the country Uh, But what I would say is um, we don't stop going to war because of the terrain Mm. or we don't stop gladiating because of the turbulence. Uh, Regardless of what is happening around us, we need to carry the vision. We need to carry the dream. We need to execute on the dream. We need to make sure that we fight until ultimately I don't come from a very privileged background uh, like anyone else in this country. But I think we also need to be that kind of a generation which makes sure that we work so hard. Yes, we are working 10, 20 times more than other young people in the region or outside the world. But what does it do to us? It then enhances our competence to look at things in a better way. Mm -hmm. Look at the best people in the world, Trevor. Uh, Vice President, Google, all the big guys around the world are Zimbabweans. So this, let's not take this as a way of discouragement, Mm -hmm. but let's take this as a learning curve. Let's learn from the situations that we have. Let's learn from the difficulties that we are facing and let's carry on with the dreams because I feel we can do amazing things, not just for this country, but for this world. We can actually transform the narrative because we have seen it all. I have seen people crying after COVID, 2% 2% inflation, but we have gone to, you know, <laughs> very high rates of inflation. So I think we have been trained. Yeah. Our environment has trained us. So let's not give up on our dreams mm. because of the circumstances, because of the turbulence. Mm. Keep focused. And another thing, I think I would also discourage this thing of being us and, you know, going around. We need to be a disciplined uh, young people, a disciplined, cultured young people. Um I, I feel this thing has really turned people into shortcuts. Mm. For you to achieve, you need to get your hands dirty. Mm. There is no way in which you are going to cheat the process. Mm. For sustainability, mm. you need to make sure you work. Mm. So I think young people should now remove their focus from the streets and look for people who have done it in an authentic way and make sure that they learn from those people and we build our economy by building industries. Eh? We don't want to be dealers in this country. We want to be industrialists. Mm. We don't want to be, you know, people who just fly by night. We need things that cause cross-generational mm. things that we can be happy about in the next 20, 30 years that our children can inherit. Wow. And this is how wealth is created. Wow. And I like the thing that you're saying, have a vision. Yes, um, yes. Have a vision. Yeah. Work hard. Yeah. Be disciplined. Yes. yes. How, how do you lead yourself? Yeah. And how do you lead the people that make these products? Well, uh, honestly, Trevor, like anyone else, I make mistakes. Um, but I always learn from my mistakes. Uh, if I fall, mm. I don't then look for a pillow in that posture, you know, I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, they are, you don't get comfortable. Yeah, like I, dust, my, code. Yeah, I mm. dust myself, yeah. you know, I wake up and then I move on. Yeah. So I think this is something that we need to know to say, yes, this is a journey for our past four years. There are mistakes mm. that we have done, mm. you know, business mistakes. There are mistakes that we have done uh, in terms of, you know, uh, how we position ourselves. 
but we have rose from there and we have soldiered on. So I think the biggest thing is I also allow my guys to, they, they are not robots, Trevor. They mm. are, I also allow them to grow. Take up risks. Me. Yeah, they take risks. Experiment. They make mistakes. Yeah. We lose money sometimes. But it doesn't matter. It's a learning curve. Yeah. Because whatever problems that we are facing here, uh, Coca-Cola faced it 100 years yeah. ago. Nestle faced it yeah. 100 years ago. Yeah. So it's a learning curve for us. We learn, mm. we move, we go. Mm. Yeah. Well, what jobs have you had in life that are not in your CV? I'll tell you why. Yeah. Uh, one of my first jobs was um, I was a gardener. Okay. I, I worked as a gardener. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, for for quite a for quite a while, yeah, and it taught me humility. What yes. jobs have you had in your life that are not in your CV? Interesting, Trevor. Um, I once worked for Insco mm -hmm. uh, as a cleaner and as a porter. And that's not in your CV. I didn't yeah, see it's, it. it's not in <laughs> <laughs> right. So you worked yeah. as a cleaner, as, as a, a porter, cleaner, as mm -hmm. a porter. And one thing that I learned during that uh, experience is. You just have to, and the reason why I worked as a cleaner and as a porter, I was, it was during my college days, it was during my uh, holidays. I wanted to at least, you know, help my mother mm. to make sure he ends meet. So it really helped me to say, you know what, sometimes if you want to achieve your goal, there are certain things that you get into which sometimes are not comfortable, yeah. but we have to do them so that you can go to the next level. And they teach you something. They teach you something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have clean toilets, uh, you know, um, Fantas land. And I did it very well. Uh, no complaints. Clean the toilets well. Yeah. Clean, you, you, yeah. You, you got to do that, hey? That's <laughs> yes, where it starts, yes, you know? Yes, Every yes. job you do well. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I did that. And I'm, I'm proud because it teaches me. You know, I, I, I believe, yeah. uh, Leslie, that um, we succeed if we do what we do as yeah. if unto the Lord. Yes. As yes. if God, only God is watching you yeah. and you excel, not because you want to, uh, you want to impress anybody around yeah. you, but because you want to impress the God. one who created yeah. you. Agreed. Do you agree? At this point, uh, Leslie, let's turn to books. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you what three books have you read that you'd want to recommend to the viewers who are watching you over there? What books have you read? Three yeah. books? Well, <laughs> I'll start with uh, the one that I really enjoyed uh, when I was growing up. Uh, it's I'll marry when I want. <laughs> 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 and you eventually <laughs> married talent. <laughs> right. Yeah, so the theme and, you know, the context of the book uh, do not really marry each other. Uh, in A Mirror When I Want, there's one thing that I learned, you know. Um, I, I, I liked it because it relates to my background. You know, I'm a descendant of Chief Marangi. So there's this quote which says, when the entire village comes to view the moon with you at your homestead. It doesn't mean that they have no clarity of viewing the moon at their homestead, but it's in them that they have come to give you support for you to get a better view of the moon, you know? <laughs> That's powerful, That's, that. yeah. That's so powerful. When people buy Glytime products, wow. it doesn't mean Glytime is the biggest brand in this world. But people are just helping me to see the moon. So I need to respect mm. all those clans yeah. who come within my That's circle awesome. because they are the ones who are making mm. things tick. Mm. They are the ones who are making the difference. So I don't take anyone, my stakeholders for granted, my customers for granted, my family for granted, mm. my colleagues for granted. I respect them, I love them mm. because they are helping me view the moon. But they could have done it. From wherever yeah. they are. <laughs> the second book? Um, it's called the Entio of the Savannah. Mm. With the Entio of the Savannah, uh, there are guys who took over <laughs> uh, through a, a coup. Mm -hmm. And they were clueless about how to administer things, you know. But um, one thing they had to then learn through the ropes, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. then learn how to do things. So the beauty of an Entio is when the failed fire hits, the end here is not affected. Mm. Why? Because it's structured in a way that guards 
against the, the fire. So it guards what's inside. Mm. So what it means is, Trevor, we can make mistakes. We can make what, what is important is then to build around our mistakes mm. and make sure we grow through our mistakes. Oh, when the veil fire comes, we are protected. We are protected. Yeah. The third yeah. one? Um, this third one, I think uh, it's an oversubscribed uh, book. Uh, the the Atwell Four. Uh, yeah, the Atwell Four has really helped me to say, you know what? Sometimes you don't need to be too confrontational. Uh, sometimes you need to know when to pick up a fight. Uh, you need to know when to stop a fight. You need to know when not to engage into a fight. So coming in as a, 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 a David in a pool of Goliaths, I know my position. Mm. I know how to fight. Mm. I don't become confrontational because- You choose your fights carefully. I choose my fights carefully. Yeah. And that has really helped me not to awaken sleeping giants. <laughs> it has helped me coexist yeah. with the bigger guys, you know? So. Wow. I wow. think those are books that I, I Leslie, really, yeah. Leslie, what an amazing story. I mean, yeah. I love your story because you actually produce yeah. real things. No, thank you, Trevor. Um, thank you're you, adding Trevor. value, you're yeah. creating jobs, and yeah. I can I can I can uh, sense the passion yeah. around the vision. And, yeah. and here is the thing, yeah. uh, Leslie, that life has taught me. <clears throat> that is, mm -hmm. you know, people will steal your ideas. Yeah but they can't steal your passion. That's true. They don't know where that passion comes That's from. True. And, true. Uh, you know, guard that passion yeah. uh, and guard that vision as, as much yeah. as possible. Thank you. Um, I have no doubt um, that you are going places. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to sit and say, you know, I, I, I sat with him and talked to him before he became a billionaire. So um, what a privilege for me to sit and uh, be one of the people. You can as well have the head, you know, <laughs> I shook his head. I shook his head. Yeah, that's a Leslie, good one, Leslie, thank you. Thank you so much. We wish yeah. you all the very best. Yeah, eh? Thank you. So Looking much, forward yeah. to having you here again. Yeah in the next 10 years when you tell us uh, what, your, your, what you've done throughout the world. No, thank you so much, Trevor. Thank you. Remain pleasure. seated there. Yes. Allow me to uh, tend to our guest, Leslie, who watch this show every Monday uh, all across the globe. We are out uh, on YouTube, Central African Time, 7 a.m. Um, to ensure that you don't miss out on any of these quality conversations, I invite you to click onto this subscribe button subscribe, like, share. We've gone a step further, by the way. We've created a website for you where all our uh, conversations uh, sit. Uh, for those who like podcasts, we have created a platform for your podcast uh, for your listening pleasure. Go to our website, click there for your listening pleasure, um, binge as much as you want. We also view your comments, your suggestions as to who should come uh, onto the show. We appreciate that. Uh, thank you for your support. Until next time, cheers to you all.